Welcome back to the During Business Hours podcast. My name's Chris. And I'm Eric. And today we were discussing, well, not today, but yesterday we were discussing the new Florida bill uh, that most people have identified as the Don't Say Gay Bill. This may not be business related, but it still affects everyone's lives. I've got young kids. Topic. Yeah, general topic. It's in the news. It's hot right now. So uh, how do you feel from what you've read, from what you've seen, what do you think the bill's about from as a bystander to news? Because I actually haven't read it yet. I've been trying to find it and Googling don't say the gay just gets scathing criticisms Mm -hmm. from all over the internet. From what I understand, it is a parental choice bill for uh, up to before third grade. Third grade's kind of the cutoff. Mm -hmm. There's no no discussions allowed in Florida public schools for sex, sexuality, um, the... I'm trying to think of the terms, but it's the any, gender anything LGBTQ, stuff, yeah. gen, gender identity, thank you, gender identity, any alternative lifestyles, none of that is to be brought up, mentioned, for discussed. For preschool? For K pre, third pre-K, grade. Pre-K, K, one, two, three. So from what I saw, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Disney, all these people coming out saying it's a don't say gay bill. You'll go to jail if you say gay. Somehow the media has twisted it to say... That if you say the word gay in Florida at school, you'll go to jail, which is not the case. And nowhere in there does it say that if you say the word gay, which really, if you from English literature and and speak speech is uh, just happy. So I understand why that wouldn't be in there because you could just miss. Hey, I'm a gay cowboy and something queer is going on here means that I'm a happy cowboy and something strange is going on here. My grandfather used to say it as a joke all the time. Um, But man, it really had me curious because everyone was talking about it. People coming into the stores uh, online, there was always somebody first page, something about this bill and how it's bad for the world, bad for politics, bad for business. Mm -hmm. Everyone's boycotting Florida, Disney. They're going after Pixar. They're going after TikTok. Talk and Instagram and Facebook's got to do something. They got to block this bill. Well, Ron DeSantis signed it into action. And the first few things he had responded to. The recommendation. Rights and education, what critics call the don't say gay bill, is on the Senate floor. Does it say that in the bill? Know that you support. Does it say that in the bill? I'm asking. I'm asking you to tell me what's in the bill because you are pushing false narratives. It doesn't matter what critics say. Well, it says it bans classroom instruction on sexual identity and gender orientation. I for who? For, 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 for grades pre-K through three. I know you so five-year-olds, you six-year-olds, seven-year-olds. And um, the idea that you wouldn't be honest about that and tell people what it actually says, it's why people don't trust people like you because you peddle false narratives. And so we disabuse you of those narratives. And we're going to make sure that parents are able to send their kid to kindergarten without having some of this stuff injected into their school curriculum. I think it's, I haven't read the entire bill, but for just from that, I, I really don't like DeSantis. Not like mm-hmm. he's a hero of mine. Some people idolize this guy because he kept businesses open during COVID, caused... He did a lot of crazy stuff. A lot of crazy stuff. I'm not very pro DeSantis. But that was a good retort. So then when you look at the the pages and posts from what is in the bill, Mm -hmm. it doesn't say anything negative to that. And it says that you can't basically change, or what's the word, indoctrinate kids. You can't say... Well, you should learn about gender identity in the first grade. I've got a five-year-old. And there has never been a discussion or a need or a question about what is boys versus girls. The nearest thing was, why is my brother boy? Because they they go to the, they take a bath together, two and a five-year-old. And they don't do anything funny. There's nothing sexualized. It is throwing toys and splashing water. Nobody touches each other crazy. They're kids. Everything is in it. As Kevin Hart said, keep it in the kid's space. So when I see stuff like that, are people going off, like off about this stuff? The thing with the the argument that he's shutting down there, though, is they're 
attacking. Oh, you're this. Sorry. They're attacking, um, like, valid points of the bill. I do believe that it does have or will have, could have negative repercussions for the There's LGBTQ wording, yeah. community. But to use words not in the bill, to throw it in the face of the guy who signed it, wrote it, whatever. The media, yeah. He, you need to address it as more as a... The bill is the bill is vague, you know, mm-hmm. and we believe that these will be harmful repercussions that could come from it. Absolutely, not just yeah. throwing out. But somehow, every media source uses the "don't say gay" bill. I don't, they know, don't know the name of it. It is it is the, the way pa- parental s- preference. It, it's got some really weird name that nobody wants to look. But up they or could know. state okay, the "don't say gay" bill. Yeah, but then they lean on that. Like, it is the only Everybody thing Everybody thinks that's about. the actual name of the bill at this point. Exactly. But why? It doesn't get more views. It's the, um, why do people call tissues Kleenex? It's like a, it's a... Who calls them Kleenex? A lot of, I know a lot of people who call tissues Kleenexes. It's a, it's an association thing where if enough people put out the wrong name for something... What I'm referring to is brand association. People, Band-Aids. Band-Aids a brand. They're bandages, you know? Oh, yeah. Um... This, every, everyone has called it the don't say gay law so much that everybody's just, it's got to be the name. That's what it is. Yeah, I think it's real harmful, especially when you get to everyone's uh, the Amber Ruffin show. Amber Ruffin show. And it just says this new bill is absolute trash. Month, hundreds of high school students across Florida staged walkouts to protest Florida's so called. Don't say gay, Bill. It was pretty inspiring. Check it out. Hundreds of high school students are walking out in protest. If you're gay, it's not hurting anyone to be gay. So the fact that they're passing bills restricting these rights is just baffling in my opinion. But sadly, despite huge opposition, both in Florida and across the U.S., That bill recently became law. It will prevent teachers from talking about LGBTQ people and issues in their classrooms. Here to comment is my head writer, Jenny Hagel. Before it gets on, these are third graders. Third graders that need to know how to read, how to write, how to act. How to share. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) The the basic human They don't need to know... That Susie, who has two moms, prefers they, them pronouns at seven. Like, that's, okay, cool, respect that. If it comes up and it's a need, not a want, not a, I want to be the center of attention right now because it's seven. At seven, you don't get a say. You get your little identity, you get yourself, you can play, you can... My kids will probably pretend to be in Indiana Jones and all whatever their favorite characters are. My, my daughter loves to dress up, go outside, make little food, hand people rocks like you eat them, but she's five. In two years, I don't think it's going to change so drastically to where she's going to want to take up political arms. Because it's, it's been politicized so much mm-hmm. that it's... I, I see this as more of a... Per, Protecting, protecting the the younger generation because there's a lot of teachers, and we looked at this yesterday that try to indoctrinate kids, young adults, twelve to seventeen, and it's nuts. Like the Gabriel gripe. If anyone here hasn't heard, there was a teacher in Intercom High School in the Thomas, mm-hmm. and he was caught trying to physically indoctrinate kids into Antifa yeah. and leftist uh, ideologies and telling them that if you did not participate, you wouldn't pass the class or what was it? You wouldn't get extra credit. If you went to the protest, you'd get extra credit. If you were active hey, in the... I'm all for, hey, kids, this is what protesting is. Here's the dangers. If you believe in something, have at it. This is for high schoolers, as you said, yeah. so that's more appropriate. The You just saw the video of the kids having their little, mm-hmm. little protest on the stadium, whatever. Free but to do so incentivizing with extra credit seems a little crazy. He, at one point during one of those interviews said, you got to scare the fuck out of these kids. You have 180 days. 180 days days to turn them into revolutionaries. That is such a crazy quote to me. (sighs) Give, give kids the resources to live their life, to do their political stuff, whatever. You shouldn't push them left or right. You know, let them decide whatever's going on. Every teacher should be um, Switzerland. 
He had the he had an Antifa flag. He had Mao, uh, Mao the the first the communist, Zay, yeah, the, the or, Zeiss, um, whatever communist leader. Yeah. He he was the best leader according to that guy. Yeah. Um, Wolf. But the I'm trying to remember the point I was just going to make. Um, he was actively throwing it in their face. And oh, then the, at the, the end kids, of, a kid said he was uncomfortable with the Antifa flag because it's kind of it kind of it's it's an extremist group that does a lot of really weird stuff. They do some good. They do a lot of bad. Like it's the kids sit so, there and so he's, he he implied that to his entire classroom that if that flag makes you uncomfortable, you're a fascist, and he doesn't know what to tell you. Yeah, it's supposed to make to fascists to kids, uncomfortable. High schoolers, thirteen to seventeen year olds. I'm not sure what his class was. I would have thrown the first punch if I was the student there. Back back when I was 2005, 2006 in high school, that type of shit didn't fly. They didn't, they would support your choice. My yeah. teachers were known, and I came from Del Campo, so it was, teachers were known for supporting your choice, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. They were Switzerland. And it was always frustrating because you could never get a teacher to pick your side. Mm-mm. You were in an argument, you were in a life decision, whatever, it was your choice. If that's what you want to do, you gotta excellent. Figure it if that's out. how you feel, that's on you. Here's, here's some hurdles I've been through, great. You explain their, you know, what they are, but unless you were in extracurricular activities and know them, because we knew a PE teacher who was a friend of mine's sister, and so she, the only time she would share any personal information is during that, um, she was in like a dance class after school, and so you only ever got to know um, their, what they like to do or anything like that after school. So if it was school time, you were Switzerland. So to have teachers and this teacher, even Gabriel Gripe said, Oh, you know, I have three or four here at the school that completely aligned with my ideologies and they're involved the same way and whatnot. And none of them wanted to stand up and speak. So I don't, I don't I, know. Yeah. About that. I don't understand if, if you don't need to, <laughs> the whole point was get him out of the school. He's a teacher that somehow slipped the radar, shouldn't be a teacher. What he likes doing is being the center of attention, like some of these protesters do, and inciting other people to move to their movement, just like cult leaders. And it's unfortunate, but that guy shows that he's more of a cult leader and wants a following to his his uh, movement. His what he believes. his yeah. perceived movement that he's striving for. Now, now he's the igniter, the 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 ethanol to the flame, you know, the invisible killer. But he's even he's a anti anti America, anti capitalism like I don't He's an extremist. What what what, what class did he even teach? Um something about government. That's Some government, the, government yeah. studies. So government studies, yeah. Why is a government teacher anti government? I don't know. You can be but how much did he teach of the government? That's what I don't know. If he's just doing anti classes all day. There's states that are supposed to include, what is it? They just passed in some state uh, taxes and all that stuff need to be taught in school now. Good. Do you know how long it took me to learn taxes? You still haven't? No, I, I know taxes very well now, but like 22, 24, it took me a long fucking time to know anything about taxes aside from you go to TurboTax and you type in the number and you click go. Which typically is what I do year to year because I don't have enough deductions. But I understand the brackets, the write offs, what can or can't be applied to, for, you know, for credit or tax free. What? Four states have placed legal limits on how teachers can discuss race. Yeah. See, these. The harder subject should still be taught in school, but there's a way to go about it it's for Republican for lawmakers' latest efforts to rein in the approach to subjects they can claim are divisive and inappropriate. The legislation that passed for Idaho, Iowa, Oklahoma, and Tennessee bans teachers from introducing con- certain concepts, among them is one race or sex is inherently superior. Mm-hmm. Then any individual is cons- consciously or unconsciously racist or sexist because of their race or sex and that anyone should feel discomfort or guilt because of their race or sex. I understand that, but it says uh, governors in Idaho, Oklahoma, recently signed those bills into law. Bills in Iowa and Tennessee are awaiting the government's signature. Similar law passed in Arkansas, though it applies to state agencies, not public schools. 15 states have introduced it. Ban diversity training for federal workers. (laughs) 
you know, because I understand where that comes from because there are a lot of teachers that make kids feel that, you know, they've gotten all the white kids up in the room and they've said, you are the oppressors. Kids, probably seven to ten. Your parents' is parents' is parents' is have yeah, committed you, crimes you, and you, you must carry the guilt. privileged. Okay. And then they've done the, the whole reparations thing. Like, you know, the African kids are now the, the ones who have, you've been belittled your entire life, but now you have a chance to act. And I get making them feel empowered. But, you know, if everyone could just cut it out, and this is my feeling, if we literally just stopped talking about it and making it a thing, why can't everyone just be told that everyone's equal now? And hold that. It's, it's the problem. I understand. History. History was always going to repeat itself, though, because we're going to keep making it be, like this. this educate yourself so history wound. doesn't repeat itself. I understand itself. that, but it still ends up repeating itself because if you make it this wound that just festers and festers and festers, when does the healing start? You have to treat it. Ignoring treat it's not it going to do anything. It. You treat it and leave it. It's got to scab up, it's got to mm. heal. My mom had a pretty bad wound. It had to be dressed multiple times a day. It's, it needs constant care and attention. There, there are same, different same things for any any issue. I'm talking about throwing some neosporin on it. Just, but I, like I said, I've been friends with uh, multiple races, colors, creeds, and if, if you just don't, if it's not a topic of conversation, it's never a problem for people who aren't racist. You know what I mean? There's more There's more to racism than what's discussed or edibly. I, I understand that, though. but people can just get along. Why does it always have to be like, well, I don't even understand how teachers can like do that to their students where they're like, oh, you are the oppressors. That That's, that's fucked up. That yeah. part's messed up. But it should still be acknowledged, addressed. People should learn what privilege is or isn't because it can help change their attitudes, change their behaviors in the future. Yeah. Let's finish. What was that crazy one? everyone. I'm gay, and I just want to say how impressed I am with all the high school students who came together in Florida to speak up against the Don't Say Gay bill. At, at one school, over 100 kids walked out. At my high school, the only thing we could get 100 kids to agree on was that the song Hey Jealousy was a banger. <laughs> Do you know how much teenagers love bullying? Do you know how bad your bill has to be for teenagers to say, that's too much bullying? <laughs> That's like Machine Gun Kelly telling you, that's too many tattoos. <laughs> the point of Florida's don't say gay law is to prevent school teachers from talking about LGBTQ people in their classrooms. But it is so important for queer kids to see reflections of themselves in school. I went to elementary school in the 80s. Do you know how many times we talked about Sally Ride? Do you know how great it would have been to hear just one time that she was gay? Do you know how many people my age watching this right now just said, Sally Ride was gay? Yep. That's exactly what I, I said. I wish teachers that had told me that Lorraine Hansberry was queer, that Billie Holiday was queer, that the guy who invented computers was queer. Also, I wish somebody had told me I was queer. It would have saved me a lot of time. Here's, here's my statement, though. Why does them being queer matter to their accomplishments? It's a core part of their identity. To their accomplishments? To If they weren't anything. queer, hold on. If they weren't queer, mm -hmm. would they have done the same thing? They would have had more privileges, less discrimination. It would have turned out differently. How many of them were open or how many of them were closeted? And how much did that hurt them? Absolutely. But did that affect them in whichever way to make them do their thing? The point is, in learning it, do you have to be told they were queer to understand that they made something? Now, are you talking about their struggles and their life, their tribulations? That's a deeper conversation for a later age. It's it. It's like she said, it's so that the kids could see a reflection of themselves in people. Absolutely. Knowing that people like them did all these cool things are going to be excellent, aside from being if told by their peers. If a kid wants peers. to talk about themselves, I could see how letting them speak about their beliefs is fine breed a conversation with your friends. But in learning, do we have to say, hey, let's sit down in a circle and talk about how we feel and then introduce, well, this person here from 60 years ago went through X, Y, and Z. 
does any of that relate to you now? And how does that make you feel knowing that they were struggling at five years old, six years old? I don't think that a six-year-old would understand the gravity of the man who invented computers being an open uh, LGBTQIA personality going through struggles or rocks or bottles thrown at them. They just need to know that it's, it's normal. It's okay to be gay. I understand that. But what I'm saying is the to bill, the bill prevents them from introducing content that should not be introduced to a mind that is so fragile. And I see the, saying I see the someone's nature. Gay isn't going to break a child. Well, it's not about saying someone's gay. I'm saying if you give the backstory on, you don't what's have the to guy, tell him what's the guy guy's name from the green book. over his head. You don't have to do well, that. No. You just need to bring up this person's gay. They had boyfriends, husbands, whatever. And that's fine. Some people do that. Peter Felly, for, uh, Forelli. He was a African-American pianist. Mm-hmm. And he was homosexual, but also a man of color. And he had to travel to only specific places that were printed in a book called the Green Book. They were the only places he could go without being beaten, Rid- tossed yeah, out. Exactly, ridiculed. Yeah. But he got caught for homosexual lewd acts at the time and uh, arrested. And then JFK, who was a governor at the time, got him out of jail because he had played for him or was associated with him. And uh, and it's in the movie. I don't know if it was 100% true, but uh, I watched a recap of it, and it was fantastic. It made me want to watch the movie. And so the idea of him going through these... If I was seven watching that movie, I wouldn't grasp it. I would think it was a man going through hard times, and it's pretty scary. But I wouldn't even know how to deal with the emotions they're showing in that movie. The way this man deals with getting bashed over the head with a bottle... Because of his skin color. I, I wouldn't catch that. I would think, oh, mean guy. Not, okay, this man is programmed by his forefathers and, and people around him to hate this color, which is not by choice, that is given to him at birth, and he's segregated and ridiculed his entire life. Can't use the same fucking bathrooms you know like he's diseased immediately yeah and it's horrible and you feel for the character and the way it's portrayed in the movie is fantastic it really at my age i can understand it and it makes you feel something at seven you're not going to feel that so why be introduced to that when it's just going to cause confusion for young children now if they're already going through some type of confusion i understand talk to your kids but there, there's it needs a limit. to be brought up, not necessarily addressed in the full. Here are images of people getting bashed to death and lynched, but, but there's, it's, there's it's a, not cool to it's hate a people hole, who are right? different than you. That's all you got to. That's all you have to do at that age, and then whatever. Would you say it's a rabbit hole because there's so much content that has to be absorbed to understand racism and uh, LGBTQ problems in history. You can, if you're gonna, if you're going to get that into it with your kid about a discussion, they usually I think have that's what they're trying four to or five them. questions, and then, like you said, if they can't process what's going on, they're gonna get bored or. But then, not care. kids are also repeat things. They're just gonna keep bringing it up, bringing it up. That's and just same answer every probably time. the concern that's of the kids. bill writers. There was uh, there was another one that we saw. Where is that right here? That was that one. Let's watch the last minute of this. It also would have explained this outfit. <laughs> I, I look like, like Paula are. Poundstone's intern. <laughs> look, Florida's new law is garbage. Kids deserve to go to school and feel good about themselves, and they deserve to learn about the world we actually live in. A world made up of all kinds of people who are all equally valuable. And a world where hate jealousy is the number one greatest bop of all time. Everything you said was true except that last part. That's fair. That's fair. Florida's don't say gay bill just got massively worse. 
Amendment to Florida's Don't Say Gay bill would force schools to out students within six weeks. A new amendment to Florida's so-called Don't Say Gay bill would explicitly require schools to inform parents of their child's sexual orientation and put a deadline on how soon they must tell the family. The amendment filed by bill sponsor Rep. Joe Harding on February 18th changes the bill to instead not only require disclosure, but require schools to tell parents within six weeks of learning the student has any sexual orientation other than straight. In the originally filed version, the bill already required schools to inform families of their child's queer status should the student inform a teacher, counselor, or other school personnel. However, it left an option for exemption of disclosure or outing, as it's known, for cases where there was suspicion of the information leading to abuse, neglect, or abandonment. Isn't that a good thing? No. Hold on. Outing someone is terrible. Well, no, yeah. So, well, the first part, the amendment probably not, but the last thing she said where it was like there was an exemption exemption for not outing the kid. Now, we're still talking about pre-K through three. I don't think you know who you are at seven. Now, people can disagree, disagree with me all you want, but I don't think at seven you want what you want when you're 20. I, remember, that's why I, just I, rem- be. I wanted to be a Power Ranger. I was dead set that I would find a Power Coin. You asked me anything. I wanted that Power Coin. It was going to happen. I'd fight Rita, Zed, Putties every day. That's all I was going to do. I, I, I didn't care about cars. I was going to have a fucking Zord. That was it. All I wanted. I got tattoos. I understood. Now at 18, I still love Power Rangers. Got my tattoo. It was a big part of my childhood. But I don't think you want the same things. Because you enlighten yourself. Outing is definitely bad. If that's true, I know it's News Channel 8. It looks like MSNBC, so can't verify. But it's definitely... I think the exemption part to... You know, if your kid says they're gay... They can tell the parent, it's, if a five-year-old said they were gay, I'd probably expect someone to tell me from my child's school. So I can be like, so what do you think that is? Have a, a real discussion with it. Not like it would get them in trouble, but if it got them in trouble, yeah, don't tell the, the teacher if they're not open to it. I don't mind if my kids are gay. You know, you know, the only thing I would say is I can't relate to my son, you know, in his dating as a teen if he was it's gay. Same that's exact thing. thing, but dudes, that's all I know. the difference. Well, you don't have to I think his boyfriend's him. cute. You don't have to... Is the be, advice be the your, same? Yourself. It's basically the same. I mean, so, you got you got different... We're talking kids, so they don't know the huge, crazy field of that different was my versions only concern. of homosexuals. You just yeah. need to lend support. Oh, you like that guy? Neat. Oh, he's got a cool job? Neat. All you got to do is support it. You don't have to... I don't want to say you don't have to empathize. You don't have to fully understand why they would be that way. You just have to let let them live their life. Yeah, I I get that. But my problem is I was a bit of a player in high school. So, like, I'm expecting my son to want to date Mm -hmm. and enjoy his life a little bit. So the idea is, like, pick up lines. I know a lot of promiscuous gay men. They they enjoy know, they enjoy I've, life. I understand as well. I've got a lot of friends. I used to have this gay friend uh, worked with us at UPS when I worked there in 2011, 2012. And he was known for getting far too drunk and trying to make moves on straight men. He just loved straight men. And there was a few times the, stories. The pursuit of cracking them, breaking them down. There was some very close calls with jail time for him. And... Uh, Patrick, that was his name. And I think he still works. I think he's already transitioned, actually. He's gone from Patrick to something else. and, and it's made, like a she. Yeah, it's a she now. But at the time... She's a she. At the, it, to, at the time, she. he identified as a man. Mm-hmm. And it was his proudest thing to convert a straight man to a gay man or a closeted gay man and then make him a boy toy. And he had this infatuation with me and my brother. And so when we would throw parties in North Highlands, he would come up, get shit-faced, and then try and sneak into one of our beds. 
it was awkward. Excuse me. Because I woke up one night. My buddy Scott, my buddy Andrew, they're on the floor in my bedroom. We lived in North Highland, so it was a duplex. Eight people staying the night. He's on the couch, one of the couches. Somehow, 2 a.m., all of a sudden you feel just a caress on your back. And you're like, no, no, I'm, I'm good, thanks. If you want to sleep at the end of the bed, cool, go ahead. But then, an hour later, he's right back trying to grab your buttocks. Sorry, bud, now you got to leave. I said no, same way most people would. Here you go. If you're not into it, you're not into it. All power to you. If somebody's into it, okay, great. Do your thing. But I wasn't into it, and I don't think alcohol was going to change my mind at the time. And so he, like, outed himself from the group because he had done that with so many people that it became uncomfortable to have him around. You know, there's just... You probably had one of those friends where they made themselves uncomfortable to some situation. And then it became this, like, well, this happened to me... Uh, a situation where he had told people that it had happened to him, even though the rumor was around and people openly talked about the things he did, he tried to turn that, which was always awkward for people. Uh, I think Scott had it happen to him, Andrew had it happen to him, my brother had it happen as well, and it wasn't pleasant. Uh, it got violent at times because he would do it further than grabbing a butt cheek, just stick hands down the pants. Sorry, bud. Not cool with that. At that point, you're a bit of a predator. We just don't want, don't want to invite yeah, you that, around. Now, now you're dealing with sexual assault. Gay is not a problem. Stop assaulting people. And I'm glad he, you know, he's got his own thing. He's living in San Francisco now, having fun. Enjoy your life. Living her best life. Yeah. How I don't. I hope it's different now for that person. Absolutely. Like get your. If they've come out and just trans- transition their life, hopefully, is already better for them. Absolutely. It's a whole, whole, whole new slew of problems. But, uh, we're hoping. Hopefully, fix the other one. <laughs> I just, I can't believe I just got reminded of that. So, this was a, a very interesting teacher I had seen a clip of. And so, I'm going to play this. It's three minutes, but tell me after the fact how you feel about his wants versus the child's needs. Uh, joining me now is Corey Bernard, a kindergarten teacher at Barbara A. Harvey Elementary in Parrish, Florida. He is openly gay and has spoken about how uh, this new law is going to impact his classroom. Corey, thank you so much for joining us this, uh, this morning. We appreciate it. Just give me first your reaction for having me. Excited to, to, be here. to the Florida governor signing this um, into law. Yeah, it, you know, it, it's twofold. It really hits hard um, in my heart professionally and uh, personally both. Uh, professionally, it, it truly makes me feel like um, I am not trusted as a professional. Um, I know my kindergarten standards through and through, and um, nowhere in our curriculum does it have anything about um, teaching sexual orientation or sexual identity. Um, so for them to, to say that, that, that that's happening, um, it, you know, it's kind of crazy. Um, but. Uh, we should be able to have discussions and, and that's what we're encouraged to do in kindergarten. And then personally, because, um, you know, my, my kids do have questions. They want to know who the, uh, my partner is in pictures yeah. outside of my classroom. And I should be able to speak to that. So, so do you worry that you won't even be able to talk about your own personal home life? I mean, I, I have a child in kindergarten right now. I know exactly that my, ch- my child has two teachers, one of which has a daughter at home um, and is single. The other is married and has four children. I-, I know everything about their lives because my kid tells me. Absolutely. Absolutely. You are 100% correct. Um, that's what we do as educators. We build relationships with our kids. And in order to build relationships, you talk about your home life. You talk about what you do on the weekends. That's building community. I It scares me that I am not going to be able to have these conversations with my children because they're going to ask me what I did on the weekend. I don't want to have to hide that my partner and I went paddle boarding this weekend because mm-hmm. then they ask, well, what does partner mean, Mr. Bernard? And, you know, I, I'm worried. Can I tell them what it means? I'm also worried for my kids. I have a little girl uh, this year who has two moms and the kids are curious about her two moms. They want to know about her two moms. You know, if they come to if they go to her and ask her about her two moms and she doesn't know what to say, they're going to come to me. And ask me and then uh, you know so what do i do it just it opens up uh for parents to really take some legal action against the schools and teachers and i, I am afraid uh, for myself my colleagues and my students how do you expect to navigate that that situation because 
for, for, as a parent of a young child, I want to celebrate difference. And I want my child to celebrate differences as well and to learn about them. Absolutely. You know, it's hard to navigate, uh, especially when you have words uh, that are uh, injecting, indoctrinating. When you have those words coming from, um, you know, our state legislators and, our, you know, our higher government, uh, those words, uh, those are synonymous with some very hurtful words. And so when we think of when I think about navigating this bill, um, you know, I, I am going to be mindful, but I'm going to follow my kids discretion and what they want to discuss. And if they ask me, I'm going to be true and honest to them because it's who I am. That's who you are. So as he's probably stating, he's going to get fired. But why, if a kid says, what would you do this weekend? Can't you say you went paddle boarding? I'm paddle boarding with my partner. That's all you need to say. And that's then it. It's, that's it's it. a denial of their life that someone could say I went with my them. husband and then. Uh, but that, but yeah. that is on them at that point. Why does it it's, have to be? The law makes it on them. It's a very casual, but, minor conversation they could be having that's now being gated. I see it both sides. I understand. They shouldn't dig into... If this was well, homosexuality high is when a man high school, it, yeah. if this was junior high, there's a difference. There's such a difference. You're talking about preschoolers, fucking preschoolers. The extent of this conversation, paddleboarding with husband or partner. Yep. What does partner mean? Oh, partner is my husband. Yeah, you have my a life, husband. I have a life partner. I have a life partner. Oh, some His people do that. That's all. His name is whatever. Yeah, and then kid goes. That's cool. an option. Some people do that. Paddle that's boarding. The end. What's that? <laughs> Honestly, the real. <laughs> I, went, I went paddle boarding with my husband, Joe. What's paddle boarding? <laughs> that's, it's not going to be, you have a husband, Joe, you're married to a man. That's weird. It's, How, just, it's, it's a part of his life that he now is going to have to dance around at school. It, it, anything you say, boys and girls together, they say yuck. Anything at fucking They'll probably think boys and boys and girls and girls together is gross too. The extent, yeah, they're fucking five. They're fucking five. I'm saying you don't get to dig into I poke the somebody's sex of sexuality. Butt. I poke somebody's butt in first grade. It was the weirdest thing. Mm, and the, the girl butt. asked me to poke her butt. And it was still the weirdest thing. And I don't think I touched another girl for like a year. Like, huh, I thought I was going to get in trouble just awkward like don't cooties ah. it's i don't think it's changed very much for kids so like people throwing these fits about this is like i understand why they did it but i understand how it could hurt other people in the, the legislation but boy for him to say or this person this teacher to say that now they can't discuss how their life partner and then went fucking paddle boarding can't casually talk about their home life but if it's presented to them, it's not in breaking of the bill. You can't say stop to a five-year-old. Like, that's nowhere in the bill that says you have to say, no, you can't, can't ask this question. It can't be discussed. They can ask the question, and he's going to have to dodge it. And that's going to be weird. Which is than a just teacher's job. It. There's, gonna, it's gonna there's gonna appropriate, but hold on, there's some, appropriate is things. different, and that's weird. Would that's you agree there's weird. appropriate things and inappropriate things to discuss? There are. A child finds pornography. Yeah, inappropriate. And, and, exactly, Pre-18? right? No, sorry, wait till you're 18. But at what point? Do we make a bill saying that some can't because others have? There's probably teachers that have talked so inappropriate with young students that have, this isn't from nowhere. They're not spending millions of dollars on creating this bill out of nowhere. And that's why those, then those are teachers that are breaking curriculum. If the, if it's a guy mentioning he has a husband and he went paddle boarding, that's not an issue. It's the people who are like, somebody's you, everyone should everyone. try gay to figure out if they are. That's a little, that's a little Because much. we already know that there's high schoolers who are being indoctrinated to very leftist communist it's activities. Teenagers being indoctrinated to rightist religious tendencies. Exactly. Too. Absolutely. We should not be indoctrinated the, the, in any direction. The right walkers or whatever they called them back in the day where it was the we're walking for Jesus. We're doing this and that. The, it was the right walkers. It was Game of Thrones time. Okay. Whatever it was. The, there was something that was like the, the kids. What the hell is it called? I'll find it later. We'll make another. Uh, but there was a whole thing on them. Ready to watch this one. Same thing. It signs the gay bill. <laughs> Don't say gay bill. Sorry. Uh, 
they got me. What, what in the hell is the actual they're, name of this They were thing, super Bill? religious. They were in high school, and they got a bunch of high schoolers to like want to do the whole Kool Aid thing. You know, kill themselves. Yeah. Florida tonight, where Governor Ron DeSantis has signed that bill into law, banning instruction on sexual orientation and gender identity with younger children through third grade. Parental rights. ABC's Victor Kendo in Florida tonight. Show it off, official. Because, in my opinion, kids this young, it should be the parents' rights to discuss those things if they're curious. But then you got parents teaching kids that gay is bad. They just need people to casually mention that it's okay. I still think. You think it's okay in a household to if it's the parents' spread choice, homophobia? No, I'm saying if it's the parents' thought, right? Because mm-hmm. we're, we're product of your environment, your experience. Mm-hmm. It's not all just randomly learned. Um, if the parent wants to raise a child as a Christian, they raise them as a Christian, right? Mm-hmm. If they want to raise them as a homophobic, racist stereotype, they can it's their choice. They, they shouldn't. They shouldn't. It's not illegal, it's though. It's schools. a belief. Yeah. It is a belief. They have the right. And that, like I was talking yesterday, you have the right to come to this country and say, fuck America. That's why what? we need other avenues to try and but curb this, correct this, show people that that's not okay. It's not okay. In my opinion, it's not okay. If you're here, you shouldn't be able to say that. But then again, that also goes against my ideology of freedom of speech. I can say fuck you anytime I want. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. That's me. Goes back to the whole Will Smith issue. This motherfucker took a G.I. Jane joke and then slapped a man on live television, the most, what is the, the most viewed? It's the hottest video right now, but no, it shouldn't be near... Oh, views on the Oscars? Oscars is, yeah, one of the most viewed worldwide freaking award shows, anything, anywhere. So, 2022, about 15.6 million. And nobody, nobody now, wants to watch it anymore. Yeah. They hate the Oscars. It jumped up so much this year because everyone started watching after Will Smith. In the last the hour, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's what I had heard, that oh it was God. jumped up because of that. Because 2021, it was basically canceled. It just kind of happened. But yeah. Oh, my God. So, but the, the whole point was that these fucking people took it upon themselves. He has a billion dollar career, Will Smith. Mm-hmm. And he slapped a man over what everyone assumed was a joke about his wife. That his wife, wife a week earlier publicly came out and said she made statements... On her red table talk, and then also right here. Watch this. Now, at this point, I can only laugh. Now, this is going to be a little bit more difficult for me to hide. So I thought I'd just share it so y'all not asking any questions. Jada Pinkett Smith is getting candid about her struggles with alopecia. We just always want to have just real conversations. And it doesn't get more real than Jada's message on Tuesday, taking to Instagram to explain the side effects. And y'all know I've been struggling with alopecia. <laughs> and just all of a sudden one day, look at this line right here. Look at that. Look at that. And so it just showed up like that. According to the Red Table Talk host, the purpose of the video is to get ahead of the fan reactions. Now this is going to be a little bit more difficult for me to hide. So I thought I'd just share it so y'all not asking any questions. But remember, this is Jada we're talking here, and she's got a plan. But you know, Mama's going to put some rhinestones in there. Mama's going to make me a little crown. That's what Mama's going to do. Jada's announcement continued in the caption, writing, Mama's gonna have to take it down to the scalp so nobody thinks she got brain surgery or something. Me and this alopecia are going to be friends, period. The message follows a sweet mother-daughter moment back in July, when Jada and Willow Smith revealed they were rocking matching buzz cuts. Jada shared this pic to Instagram and wrote, Willow made me do it because it was time to let go, but my 50s are about to be divinely lit with this shed. Even for me, it was a mixture of a spiritual calling, mm-hmm. and also going, 
Girl, at some point, your hairline's gonna be back here. So we might as well just, just, it just do it now. Leading up to the actress's milestone birthday in September, and with help from Tiffany Haddish, Jada kept it real about how empowering it was to shave her head. What did Will say when you cut your hair off? How did he respond? He, he sent me a picture it. of you. I know. <laughs> I was like, Stunning. <laughs> you look good. I love Every it. You look like a Stunning Leontes. Doesn't she? It's been such a freeing, I mean, so much just lifted off of me. It just called me. I was like, the time is now. And hair of course, this one, too. she's like, just do it, Mom. Just be the acting. You've been wanting to do it for so long. Oh, I was like, you would just look so good, which is mm -hmm. completely bold. And it's gorgeous. Thank it is. You. Yeah. I understand. You know your hair in this society as a woman. I understand that. As in anyone. But this is three months ago. Mm -hmm. Three months ago. Mm -hmm. It's not like it just happened. And so when he slapped Chris Rock, it wasn't the fucking hair joke. There was something else going on. So I assume maybe it had to be previous or there was something else said. But then you get into the whole cheating scandal, the how she probably controls that man, whip and collar. We have no idea. But the look on his face after he laughed about it, and then she rolled her eyes, looked to him, and he goes up like a dog stuck to a bone. That wasn't him. That was that was Jada. So either there's something else going on that where nobody knows about, but he risked a billion-dollar career to slap a man he called a friend for 20-something years. A friend. Not some people, random guy. People get pushed. What pushed him? We don't know. Something's pushed him. But she accepted it. She knew jokes have already been made. She's already that posted was three Instagram. Three months ago, the the glow of doing this thing she's had to do forever is worn off, and it could go. It could be back to. It was going to be a sensitive Jane subject joke. forever. But then I heard somebody say that oh, back when GI Jane came out, it was a, a sexual like you must be a lesbian or some hooker or whatever. Uh, if you had the you were called GI Jane, and I remember back when GI Jane came out when I was a kid. That girls with buzz cuts, you'd make a comment like that, or somebody would make a comment. It was like they were a dyke, you know. And I know that's a derogatory comment, but that's how it was used back then. I was like, you're you're talking in context. Yeah, and that's but that's you know you were bullish or whatever. Point being, I don't think the just was slapped. The slap was justified. And then when Facebook got involved, apparently now you can be misinformation if you put your opinion on Facebook, as you know. And uh, I heard somebody compare fucking Jada Smith to a Vietnam veteran with no legs. I went off. I'd say different struggles. Very different. Very different. Two disabilities in the same context. Would you not fight for your wife if she lost her legs in the army in the Battle of Vietnam? Fight for her. I anyway. wouldn't. No, no. No. I wouldn't. You have the freedom of speech yet again. You want to say your things? I'll laugh. Great. You ever seen um, Eddie Murphy did that movie where the he, he's the fat guy and then he turns into Buddy Love? Uh, Norbit, whatever, or something. No. Um, Nutty, Nutty professor. professor. Okay, there we go. So you got Eddie Murphy versus Dave Chappelle. And so the Nutty Professor gets made fun of. His heart feeling is hurt. You know, he's like, ah, oh, that fat ass. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So that was just one of the things. And... Um, Boy, I remember learning as a kid, like, you can say what you want. There will be repercussions in many other ways than just physical. There's karma. There's legal, if you're making threats, you know, little things. Mm -hmm. I think the first time we played that whole, like, oh, you made a bomb threat or you made a, a, a joke about harming something, that's a terrorist threat, and then people were always scared the FBI was going to come at you. That's a big thing. Chris Rock was caught... And I think Jim Carrey said it best. He should be behind bars. No, he never said that. That's not what he said. He um, said there should be repercussions. There should be, but yeah. like, not, behind, not behind. I was bars. sickened. I was, was sickened, sickened by the standing ovation. It really felt like, oh, this is a really clear indication that uh, we're not the cool club anymore. You know, you do not have the right to to walk up on stage and smack somebody in the face because they said words. No one did anything. A whole room full of people. As you see. Jim Carrey didn't say that. But my point being, freedom of speech. You can say as much rude, vulgar shit as you want, but that's the right you're given here in America. Because you we, just have we to understand why something's was, wrong. Exactly. But we believe that you have the freedom of speech, no matter how much that speech hurts. 
Now, if you're making threats, we do declare that as a possible act of violence. You know, some people take violence, it. inciting violence. There's yeah. a whole there, whole could, fluid yeah, terms. That's and that's why we take that as more like it's free speech, but it also can lead to violence. So we prevent that by making you're, charges for threats or acts of violence, so on and so forth, terroristic threats. Let's see, your your right to swing your fists around stops at someone else's nose, mm-hmm. and you shouldn't have slapped them. And so all these people defending Will, there's nothing to defend. I respected that man, his work, all the shit he goes through. Until he went up and slapped Chris Rock. I think he is... That's a hefty slap. I, I hadn't heard the audio a, on the slap before. That echoed. Not even the, the, the amount of the slap. Just to how pathetic he looked as a man. That's, I lost all respect for him. Like my favorite three words. As a man. As a man. And as a man, no man in their right mind would have walked up there and risked what he had over a comment like that about their wife. No, no right-minded man. That was so petty. If he could, he could have said some shit about August and all the cheating scandals and the open marriage and all the hot dogs that get shoved into her mouth. All kinds of things could have been said, and that's why Chris Rock said, "Oh, I could," you know, when he kept saying, "Keep my wife's name out of your mouth." There was he was gonna come back with some heaters, and I guess he went backstage and was like, "I got hit by Muhammad Ali and didn't even feel it," you know, like. Or what was it? I got hit by Muhammad Ali and uh, I'm still standing Mm -hmm. because, you know, he played Muhammad Ali. And now everyone's coming out, even uh, the previous acting partners that were on the set of Muhammad Ali saying that Will Smith's anger is real, that he can snap and be vulgar and disrespectful. And I think he's probably went through a time in his life where before he had grown kids before he got on YouTube and all that, and we saw into his life, he was definitely a more angry person or more of a, a, what's the word? A warrior, so to speak. But now he just seems like he is the, not so much the warrior in the family. He's scared about something, something in his life. Maybe it's age getting to him. My father used to be very confrontational about everything as well, and then he got older, and he's more of a... Now it's all sarcasm. It's, oh my god! For those of you who don't know, <laughs> it's a problem. F- <laughs> it's a problem. But well, I'll give you context. My father works for me. He's retired, so mm. he helps out. He's not meant to be a a, a, a gear Come, that in is to chill, primary. Do, do, do a little bit of work, get some get some cash. You know? Exactly, and uh, he tends. You try and have a sit down conversation about anything he does, or like this needs to be serious. He'll make a joke. Something will be a joke. You have a joke first or last. Hey, uh, did you get that um, the the part for that turntable ordered? I don't remember what he said, but it was like a, a two minute elaborate story uh, of, of, of a joke that should have been. Oh, I texted it to Eric and he ordered it. Something like that. Yeah. And then when I was like, you know, why don't you ever sit down and have a regular conversation with somebody and like chat about your day? And he's like, what do he say? The day never calls and the night never sleeps. Something blah blah blah, and I some, fart some on weird, my feet. Some weird, weird cryptic. Yeah, I'm not saying dementia, but there's definitely something going on that scares me. Love the man, but it's frustrating when you're just trying to find out a a simple question answer. That's what you need, you know. It's like you have a similar. If I'm if I'm on the phone with someone for more than a minute on something that should be a quick little you know forty five second talk, it bugs me. You you have information you are seeking. You've asked it directly. Well, give it to me. <laughs> give it to me now, before I slap you like Chris Rock. Um, those damn memes were so funny. The oh he got slapped in the next week. That's why he hasn't responded. Yeah. The memes oh, are just getting better. Damn. I they feel I feel so tomo- much tomorrow they're going to start going downhill, but uh, we're, well, we're it's Friday. They're like, okay, well, he got slapped from Sunday to Friday. Is he going to respond yet? Mm-hmm. The day he responds, like with an actual statement, where it's like, oh yeah, you know, we're opening a two hundred million dollar lawsuit or X, Y, and Z. I still think he should sue him. If you're worth a billion dollars and you slap somebody unjustifiably, take twenty percent. Your wife gets half. Just saying, take twenty percent. Jim Carrey had it right. So I think that's where we'll leave it. You know, got any comments, concerns, opinions, throw them our way. Hit the notification bell. Subscribe. Check out our website. 
be a supporter of the channel or a, uh, a what is it? You can be a supporter of the channel or you can be a troll. An adversary. An adversary. We support adversaries. Oh <laughs> 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 Internet hey, trolls. I just Watch want out. I want that yeah, I want that uh that gun holster that sits on the desk. I don't know who has it. There was a podcast I watched where it just it sits out, sits like this. It's got a little pole. It's really cool. But I don't like this chair because then my uh, concealed carry pokes into my gut. Yeah. So just this chair. I don't know why because I got to lean a little further. All right, everybody. We'll catch you next time. Peace. See ya.